All right. Hey, everyone. Hey, Rachel. How are you doing today? Be one that's called Designing for Tech Without Breaking Your Neck, uh, which is a really, really cool title. Um, you know, joining us today is Rachel Bennett, uh, who is a visual designer. Um, Rachel, what, what's, a, what's a visual designer versus like a graphic designer or something else? Um, so that's a good question. Um, so it used to be that uh, if, if you wanted to have a career in design, uh, you would pretty much have one of two career paths. So the, the first one would be graphic design, second one would be web design. So now that everything is a lot more integrated, uh, there's a lot more overlap there and there's kind of a lot of gray area. Um, so visual design sort of falls in the middle of those two um, paths. Um, so what I do is um, it, it involves a lot of graphic design, also involves a lot of uh, user interface design. Um, it involves visual messaging, um, identity design, presentation design. Um, so there's, it's it's kind of like all encompassing sort of. Um, okay. In terms of you know what are my job responsibilities, um, but okay. yeah, there's a lot of overlap. All right, gotcha. And you know, so you know, we're about to go into um, I think a, a quick presentation from you. But before we do that, like, what's uh, what's your background, right? Like your personal background, like what, you know, what are some experiences you've got? Um, so I, I graduated in 2012 uh, with a uh, graphic design degree. Um, so I've been working in the industry for um, about six years now. Um, so prior to this, I, I worked at, um, at the Police Touch Museum. Um, I was a, a graphic and web designer for them. Um, but this is kind of my first uh, experience where I'm like immersed in the world of tech. Um, software development is kind of like its own animal. Um, so I've had to like pick up a lot of stuff very quickly. Um, if you're familiar with the software industry, it's extremely fast paced. Um, it's just the nature of the industry. So you have to stay on top of your game. Um, so uh, I made a, a presentation that will just quickly go over some things that you can do to help maximize your workflow. Um, and these are things that anyone can do whether you're a graphic designer, whether you're a web designer, um, whether you're somewhere in between, um, you know, I think anybody could benefit from these tips. Um, awesome, awesome. And so, all right, so you're gonna pull up this presentation, um, and while you're doing this, uh, you know, to everyone that, uh, you know, like the, the presentation title is Designing for Tech Without Breaking Your Neck. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, let's jump on into it. All right, so great, let me just share my screen. see sorry I'm new to this whole web whole web uh, webinar thing so bear with me for a second here we go that's okay yeah All Oops, uh, you're muted. Sorry. There you go. Um, so let's just get into it. Um, so the first uh, first thing I want to talk about is um, process. Um, as a visual designer, process is super important. Um, if you're working in the digital realm, um, you're probably going to be working on large scale projects. Um, you know, maybe you're working on a website. Um, a website could only have like three pages, but it could have like 60 pages. So, you know, you can see that it, the, um, your project could very quickly become unmanageable because there's a lot of pieces moving around and there's just a lot to keep track of. Um, so luckily there's a lot of tools out there that are going to help you make sure that you're using your time efficiently. Um, 
So first thing I want to talk about is um, saving everything from like your initial concept sketch all the way to your final project, your final delivered piece and everything in between save every version. Um, you never know when you're going to have to roll back changes um, and and you don't you don't want to have to spend time doing things that you had already done. Um, so uh, and do you, do you say vision. Like, okay. how does another designer, like, say, versions in the design industry? So um, what I use is a, a program called Abstract. Um, it integrates with Sketch, um, which we all also use uh, for a lot of, a lot of uh, our projects. Um, so Abstract is essentially uh, a way of doing version control. Um, and it's, it's great because it really gives you a bird's eye view of any changes uh, that were made to a project, um, who made the changes, um, what happened uh, in that version. Um, it's great for collaboration because uh, multiple people can work on the same project without affecting um, the master file. Um, so that is that's a great thing for um, for you know projects that you're collaborating on, especially. Um, so the next thing I want to okay. talk about is um, uh, utilizing your resources. Um, so if you're, you're you're working in the digital realm, um, you're probably working on things that that live on the internet. So it only makes sense that uh, you should be uh, using what's on the internet to your advantage. Um, you know the internet's your oyster, so you have to make it work for you. Um, so one of the things I use is, um, and anyone that has a um, subscription to Adobe Creative Cloud, um, I think a lot of designers do, um, they have an asset library. Um, and it, it comes with your subscription. You don't have to pay anything extra. Um, and you can just download things. It's entirely user generated. Um, and it's just a great way to, uh, you know, not have to start from scratch on every single project that you're working on. Um, it's counterintuitive. There's things out there um, that already exist, and you can you can build on them, you can tweak them to make it work with what you're doing, um, and it really just speeds up your workflow so much. Um, the next thing uh, is that you really need to stay up to date on the latest uh, changes in your industry. Um, Tech is an extremely fast-paced industry, um, as I said before. So it's it's really up to you to make sure that you're on top of everything. <clears throat> you know, um, there isn't going to be anyone um, like you know making sure that you are you know using your best practices. You have to stay on top of that. So um, one of the things I like to use um, it's called Medium. Uh, a lot of people may have heard of uh, Medium, uh, but what you might not know about Medium is that it's not just um, for like a personal blog or, um, you know, for like an op-ed style article. Um, it's a huge repository of information um, and it's not just for individuals. Um, for instance, um, Sketch uh, puts out a ton of content on Medium. Um, and, uh, you know, there's, there's changes to sketch, uh, alone, like, um, pretty frequently. So y you should really be aware of those changes. Um, and it's just an easy way of, of staying up to date on anything that you might need to know about. Um, the last thing. And then you have plugins here. Does sketch have plugins as well? Sketch has a ton of plugins. I'm glad you asked. Um, and a lot of these plugins are free, so there's really no reason that you shouldn't be using them. Um, I'm going to just quickly talk about a couple of them that I really like. Um, Sketch Runner is great. Um, it's it's really just a way of running commands through Sketch. So instead of clicking around your massive document um, to find like one particular type of button, you can just run the command and it's it goes right to that particular thing that you wanted. Um, 
Awesome. Another one that's really good is Symbol Organizer. Um, and it's pretty much exactly how it sounds. Um, uh, if you've organized your symbols in a logical manner um, in terms of the naming conventions, um, then all you need to do is um, install a symbol organizer, uh, run the program. It's it's right in Sketch, so you don't need to use any other programs. Run symbol symbol organizer, and boom! All of a sudden, all your all your assets across your entire document are organized into their own categories, um, and it just makes things much easier to find. Um, Another one I use is um, Icon Font. Um, so this basically lets you uh, integrate uh, icon families uh, into Sketch. Um, if you're working on any kind of like user interface type of project, you're most likely gonna be using icons. Um, and the nature of icons is a lot of times that uh, the, the best icons or the most effective icons are ones that are universally recognizable. So um, icon font is just a really easy way of tapping into those um, icon libraries and just quickly inserting them into your document. Awesome, awesome, okay. Um, and so the last thing I wanna talk about uh, today is um, that you cannot make assumptions. Um, Part of my job as a visual as a visual designer is communication. Um, so not only am I having to communicate my designs to developers, I'm also having to communicate to clients and to project managers. So I need to find the the best ways of conveying this information to different audiences. Um, so uh, you know, a lot of that just comes from experience, um, but it, it also, it's also about um, asking the right questions. Um, you know, if you, if you have a client project, um, your client's probably gonna give you some information, um, but at the same time, they're not a designer, so they're, they're not necessarily thinking on the level that you're thinking or thinking about things in the way that you're thinking about them. So it's up to you to figure out what questions to ask um, to be able to extract that information that you need to deliver uh, the product that they want. Um, Can you give us an example, of like a, a specific question, you know, that maybe a client doesn't know to ask, you know, that, that you would ask them? Sure. So um, there's a project we're working on right now that I won't go into too much detail about it, but. Um, Essentially, it just involves a lot of different components. Um, and so one of the questions I asked uh, of the client is, um, how would they rank the order of importance of these different components? Um, and that helps me to determine a, a visual hierarchy, um, which if you are a designer, you know that a visual hierarchy is extremely important. Um, it's, it's important for a good user experience. Um, so you need, you need that information uh, to help you make a better design. Um, awesome. The, the next awesome. thing I want to touch on um, is uh, just testing your theory with, with real people. You know, designers, a lot of times, uh, it, it's easy to get tunnel vision, um, especially if you're, if you're working on a project for a while, you know, you're really focused on it. Um, you're really like zoned in on it. Um, but sometimes you really just you need to take a step back. Um, you know, it may make sense to you because you've been staring at it for hours. But what about you know your friend? They've never seen it before. Are they going to know what it what? Um, are they going to understand the project in the way that you do? Um, the answer is no. They're not. But they do need to understand it in so much as it would make sense to them and they would be able to use it and it, it wouldn't be confusing. Um, so if, if you can get to that point with someone without them having much information about the project, then that means you're on the right path. Um, so you need to be asking those questions. Um, another thing that helps is um, building a prototype. Um, 
uh, we use Marvel to build prototypes, um, but there's a lot of different tools out there that will help you easily build prototypes. Um, you don't have to be a programmer. Um, and it's, it's super helpful, um, not only for you to have a better understanding of how your product will work in the real world, um, but it also helps uh, your clients to understand. Um, people aren't necessarily as visual as you are. You're a designer, you're probably a very visual person. Uh, that's not necessarily true of other of of your client, for example. Um, so uh, having a working prototype is really going to help them to understand um, uh, the logic behind your designs. Um, so again, Marvel is a good one, but um, do your research. There's a lot of different programs out there, um, so you got to find what's right for you. Yeah, hundred percent. And we see that all the time in industry as well. You know, building a prototype and actually testing out your theories so so important. Yep. So well, this is uh, this is awesome. So and and Rachel, so your theory and like what you're saying is that you know all of these practices together have basically you know helped you enter into the tech industry as a visual designer and yep. what and like you basically you know keep up with the fast paced environment without breaking your neck. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and you know, I'm I'm new to this industry. Um, uh, other people, other people that have lots more experience than me. So like, I'm really just scratching the surface with this. Um, but like, all this information I've been able to find online for the most part. Um, so it's out there. Um, and if you care about doing your job well, you should be looking out for this information and keeping yourself informed. Amen to that. Well, this has been super educational. Thank you so much. Definitely appreciate it. And I, I know everyone who's watching definitely appreciates this as well. Um, for all the resources that you mentioned, I have a bunch here like Sketch Runner, Symbol Organizer, Icon Fonts, etc. cetera. Uh, we're going to post those uh, online uh, with the description of the video. So uh, anyone who's watching, um, we will totally post the links to those. Uh, so you'll, you'll know exactly um, you know what, the, uh, what Rachel has recommended. Um, and uh, we'll also post uh, how to get a hold of you. Um, so for anyone who wants to you know reach out to you to ask any questions, uh, we'll post that as well. Uh, for everyone who's watching, please make sure to subscribe. Um, we're, we have a series of videos all about industry experts, you know, talking about various things. Uh, one of our next ones is going to be related to social impact and creating your own business. So definitely stay tuned for that. Uh, and Rachel, thank you so much uh, for joining us today. I definitely appreciate it. And I know everyone else does as well. Thank you. Yeah. All right, everyone. We'll see you soon. Thanks very much. Bye. Bye.